All right, so we got Call of Duty Black Ops 6 campaign review from IGN. Let's see what IGN gives this new Call of Duty. On, let's see, let's see, let's see what they give it. Let's see what they give it. Listen. A spy thriller worthy of the name, Call of Duty Black Ops 6's campaign is a hugely welcome reinvigoration of the long-running first-person shooter series. It looks back at what has historically made the best COD single-player mode so great and throws in its own exciting and They're gonna give it a seven. into the mix fantastic effect. A seven. Telling one of the most engaging stories the series has ever seen, Black Ops 6's enticing variety and impressive scale provide a stellar return to form. Wait, what? Did he just say a good thing about Call of Duty? They might give it a seven. I'm gonna give it a. I'm a, yo, wait for my rating. At you the guys end. see wait the great escape? The yeah, you didn't make it out. We will. The Black Ops games shifted focus away from theaters of full scale war and onto spy thrillers in the mold of Mission Impossible, beginning with 2010's first entry and evolving into a refined, enthralling form with Black Ops 6. I it's agree. in this distinct direction that the returning Adler and Woods team up with a new team of skilled operators, this time in 1991, to combat an emerging new threat called the Pantheon, amid rumors of the creation of a potentially history changing bioweapon. Sure, 2020's Cold War had its fair share of espionage action, but the majority of Black Ops 6's missions don't take place on the flashes and bangs of the front line, but in the shadows that lie deep behind it. Yep. Two missions in particular showcase this brilliantly. The infiltration of a political gala in Most Wanted and the casino heist of High Rollers. Hey, wh one of the political dudes had a sex tape. <laughs> the former presents three different options for how you want to go about completing your objective. I had a great time tinkering with a silent auction, but other paths are available that will test your spy skills. And while your choice has no lasting impact on the story, it does add an element of replayability to otherwise linear levels. The heist by contrast has you swapping between multiple members of your blacklisted team, spread across lavish slot machine filled surroundings and the dank underground waterways beneath. You don't get to swap freely, but the slick character baton passes add another dash of cinematic flair. You look like someone who appreciates luxury and finesse, and an edge. There's okay. an enjoyable amount of flexibility to how you can approach other missions as well. Stealth is often encouraged, but going loud is almost always an option. With insta-fail stealth, thankfully, only rearing its ugly head on one or two occasions. It was very mission Keep impossible. It to the shadows I would or say that. Underwater made me feel like a silent assassin, but when I let that slip, I had to swiftly switch to a more combative style. And the gunplay crucially delivers in both areas. I with agree. Suppressed I agree with that. Satisfyingly pinging brains out of heads in one trigger pull and rattling SMGs and punchy shotguns, feeling great when manically dashing in and out of cover thanks to the exciting new Omni Movement system. This completely revamped movement mechanic allows you to sprint in any direction, as well as leap into the air sideways while firing to pull off your best gunfu-esque stunts. Gun the variety of its levels and top tier presentation make sure that it's never once dull, but this is a feat of stamina as well. By the historical standards of Call of Duty campaigns, Black Ops 6 is one of the longest, clocking in at just around 8 hours for me. I do wish though that Call of Duty had more tricks up its sleeve by now when it comes to adding difficulty and differences to enemy encounters. Even now after so many games, it's still resorting to simply chucking a juggernaut or two your way to unload full magazines into when it wants to ramp up the stakes. But at least this time these challenges are occasionally solved via more interesting means thanks to a range of spy gadgets handed out at regular intervals. A throwing knife that can home in on targets adds a welcome dose that, of that's so energy cool. to proceedings that's and the so crazy, explosive bro. remote control RCXD, RCXD baby! Turn. When downtime is had between outings, the writing hits a fun sweet spot between cliche and self-awareness and is supported by a cast that fully buys into their roles. You'll spend more time with them when you return to the safe house, where you can learn more about your teammates' backstories, solve puzzles, and purchase valuable upgrades using cash found on missions. It's a further example of the increased flexibility in game design and the way that developer Raven Software is encouraging you to adopt your own playstyle. Your sizable Bulgarian manor is also home to dormant KGB secrets which I had a great time uncovering. While none of the puzzles are too brain testing, they successfully add even further variety to an otherwise expectedly gun heavy time. It's surprisingly involved and a fantastic improvement on an idea that began as a small abandoned garage in 2020's Cold War, serving as a great place to plan for heists, undercover operations, and the completely unexpected. 
Speaking of okay, which, no, I won't say too much here as not to spoil it, but perhaps the best mission of the whole campaign riffs off of previous Black Ops hallucinogenic episodes to create something that touches on the likes of Bioshock, Prey and Control in both its aesthetic and level design. It's hard to know which of Black Ops 6's many great missions will ultimately be remembered most fondly, but I have a feeling it might just be the weirdest that cements its place as an all-timer. That isn't to say you're kept completely out of more traditional combat zones. The first Gulf War serves as the backdrop for Black Ops 6's story, and you do spend a couple of missions in the 90s Middle East. This allows for the mission design to return to its modern military roots, but does so by innovating on the Call of Duty formula, which is best exemplified in a mid-game mission that is as ambitious in its I didn't hear one bad thing yet, bro. Seen from this series of campaigns. Here. You won the straw vote and get to carry the tack map. Thanks, baby. Taking place over a vast desert map, you're given the task of destroying three Scud missile sites, in any order and by any means of your choosing. Feel like driving straight through the front door in a Jeep? Go for it. It may be much more advisable to pick off a few targets from afar and think about things more methodically, though. Points of interest are also yeah, dotted around boring, the map, though. and those can reveal themselves to be anything from special equipment supply drops to SAS scouts who show you enemy locations. Delta, you made it. I've got enemy positions, take a look. These areas are worth exploring too, as certain side objectives are built into the larger main mission design, such as when I blow up three different enemy SAM encampments to free up the airspace and allow me to control a helicopter's buzzsaw of a machine gun later on. This choice and consequence system is further explored in an I haven't heard one bad thing yet, bro. Too, and is one of Black Ops 6's true masterstrokes. It's a fantastic use of everything Call of Duty does at its best, and a ludicrously better example of how it can borrow from its Warzone and multiplayer modes to build something truly exciting in an open space that blows last year's feeble attempt out of the water. It frankly puts Modern Warfare 3's open mission design to shame, and shows the worth of granting a development team more than a handful of months to cobble together a campaign. Your crew's not too shabby, Park. <laughs> Now let's see what Yo, else IGN is giving compliments to, claim, to Call of Duty. The fact that these missions take place during Operation Desert Storm doesn't serve the story in anywhere near as fulfilling a way, making the controversial conflict come across more like window dressing. They yeah, don't delve into I agree. or address in a meaningful manner any of the I human agree. issues at play that I surrounded agree. the conflict in 1991 Kuwait, Iraq, and the larger Gulf area. Instead, this is a story that's far more concerned with being a popcorn spy thriller mm -hmm. than it is with examining or even reacting to its own subject matter, which in and of itself isn't a fundamental issue, but after Modern Warfare's yeah. weak argument against chemical weapons in 2019 and Modern Warfare 3's refusal to use terrorism for anything more than cheap thrills just last year, Black yeah. Ops Six follows an unfortunate trend of recent COD campaigns declining I to agree. offer an emotionally nuanced yeah. reading of the settings I they agree. take on. What Man, is delivered so, yeah, is a I constantly agree, engaging spy thriller I story agree, as the exiled Woods, Adler, and a string of new faces go off the record to decipher the links between the CIA, Saddam Hussein, and the Pantheon. Oh my goodness gracious. What begins as a fairly standard cloak and dagger plot really comes alive in the back half, managing to weave in personal stakes and treats for longtime Black Ops fans. The nature of its closing chapter crept up and honestly surprised me, somehow managing to balance a bombastic crescendo with genuine bombastic. emotion strain. It's as good as a Call of Duty plot has been in a long time. They call me Mr. Time. Bombastic. Good to go. <laughs> Am now. What are they going to give this? Okay, I right, hear this. Like I said, I think, an excellent I think string seven. of missions that offer variety and flexibility come together to make the best Call of Duty campaign in many, many years. Black Ops 6 is a fantastic return to form for the series, allowing the designers at Raven to delve deep into their bag of tricks and keep you guessing at every turn. It successfully makes each chapter distinct from one another whilst maintaining a strong level of quality across the board. Packing a thoroughly engaging story that gets better the longer it goes on, it exceeds expectations regarding level design and creativity showing that when given the time to craft them properly, Call of Duty campaigns still have what it takes to be up there with the best first-person shooters. Read the 
time. All right, eight fifty-two. I'm trying to see if I can read. Did IG just give Call of Duty Black Ops six and nine? But, but, wait, but, 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 but Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero was a seven. Now, listen, I'm not going to blame this on IGN because if you guys don't know, IGN, basically, there's different people who review different games. So, for example, the guy who gave Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero a seven. I mean, let's be honest. He gave it a seven because he thought it was too hard. Um, so that was a completely different guy than this guy. This guy thought that the Call of Duty Black Ops 6 campaign was a nine. I'm surprised. But it, it, it's not necessarily a bad way. It's just I never would have thought that they would ever get Call of Duty this high of a score. Here's my thing. What, do I think that Call of Duty Black Ops 6's campaign is a nine? No. No, my rating for the game was like a 7.5. My rating for the campaign was a 7.5. Um, the campaign was cool. Like he said in a video, it was a little underwhelming whenever it came to like an emotional part because we all know Call of Duty, every single one of Call of Duty, uh, Call of Duty's campaign, all the great campaigns have an emotional like part that happens. So it's like they, they have a hard hitting part that happens. You get what I'm saying? So, for instance, the No Russian mission and, and, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 in 2009, that was hard hitting. Like that was a hard hitting thing. Um, what else? What, what else was a was a crazy uh, emotional thing? Um, and Call of Duty Ghost, the dude's portrayal, like that, like that that's that's something. Uh, Mac the Makarov's death and Mac uh and Modern Warfare Three, that was something. And, and I'm talking about the original Modern Warfare Three. Um, um, what else? Um, oh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, uh, the 2007 version where you're the president and the guy and the guy shoots you and like you're in the POV when the guy shoots you, like that was like that was something. That was like it, it got your attention. It it, it kind of froze you for a second. You know, all those moments were like, dang, like that was crazy. You get what I'm saying? Call of Duty Black Ops 6 did not have this. Now, to be fair, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 didn't have that. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 didn't have that. Call of Duty, um, bro, Cold War didn't have that. Vanguard didn't have that. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 didn't have that. The last five to six Call of Duties didn't have that. They didn't have this this hard-hitting moment that, that, that was supposed to happen. Even though in their trailers and everything... They're making it seem like, and obviously they're their trailer. So you know, when it whenever it comes to a trailer, you have what one, two, one minute, two minutes, three minutes to make this to make your story to make your story mode look crazy. So of course you're gonna you know you're gonna come off as a uh, as a, oh snap like can we trust these people or with the conspiracy and stuff like that like bro Call of Duty Black Ops Six they were showing like the White House and all these powerful leaders and. Um, they were showing like the, uh, what else they were showing? Like, uh, it, it was basically like, like the conspiracy way of doing it. They were showing, they showed the, um, the, uh, the Mount Rushmore, like something was going to happen. Like, bro, it would be crazy if we could like blow up the Mount Rushmore in the game or something like that. You get what I'm saying? Like, we just needed something like, I thought that we were going to get like a, like a, like a, like a lot of people were saying, oh, we might have, you know. The 9 11 thing happened in the game, and I thought that too because a lot of people were hyping it up and they were saying that this took place, whatever. But that thing, but that did get debunked uh, when they said this game take, uh, took place um, in the 90s. Obviously, the 9 11 thing happened in the early 2000s, but you get what I'm saying? Like, I, I thought something crazy was about to happen. I thought we, like, we were finally going to get our, you know, our, our big, like, like our big moment, like our big, just explosive moment. Um, and we didn't get that. And that was a little underwhelming because they kind of sold that. They, they sold the whole, you know, conspiracy thing. They sold the entire, oh, 
we can't trust anybody. They they sold that. It was basically th th with this story mode. It was basically oh, can we trust Atler? They were they were so focused on Atler, and I'm not going to spoil nothing like that. But basically, like that was the whole thing. Every time you saw Atler in this campaign, you were like, oh, can we trust him? Can we trust him? Can we trust him? Like we're working with him. Can we trust him? Whatever. Da -da -da -da. Um, that was the only can be trust whatever. I'm thinking that you know like that that that, that you know that we're in a, that somebody you know took out the president or whatever and like this building you know got blown up or something like that. that's what i'm thinking you know um so it was like a little bit over uh underwhelming for it, it was for me it was a little underwhelming but at the same time he was right whenever it comes down to the to the actual gameplay bro it is definitely more free you can technically kind of do whatever you want or whatever pace you want to go so if you're more like me, like you're just rushing into everything and you're just going just to go. Um, you can do that. Um, if you are a very patient player, then you kind of wait for everything to happen. Like you're very like a, um, you're like a very patient type of player, whatever. Like if that's your style, that's your style and it can work. Um, the whole thing where, you know, you're in that whole like auction house or whatever. And you see this like, uh, like all the politicians, whatever, da, 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 da. And then you get dirt on him and like, you know. Uh, you trick some of the waiters and like, you know, you steal their credit card and stuff like that. That, that. It was like a big showcase of like, it was a big showcase of, of like Mission Impossible, basically. That's, that, that's the whole vibe that I got from it. It was a basically just a big Mission Impossible, uh, like type of vibe, you know, for this campaign. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just, I was expecting like a big, like, like I was expecting like a big moment to happen and that never really happened, you know? So, um... Other than that, I mean, I would I wouldn't give it a nine. I'll give it a seven point five. Um, but the actual gameplay itself was fire, of course. Game, bro, the gunplay is amazing. Um, the gunplay, I probably say, is the most satisfying gunplay in the last five to six Call of Duties. That's what I would say. Um, the gunplay is literally I, I will put Black Ops Six gun uh, gunplay over everybody over all the other uh, CODs gunplay. Than uh, Black Ops Six, Black Ops Six and Black Ops Three gunplay is like neck and like neck and neck, they're le they're legit neck and neck. I, I promise you. So, um, the actual like gameplay, fire, multiplayer, fire, zombies. Not really into zombies like that. Um, but yeah, I want I want to give it a nine though. I'm, I'm just keeping it real. You know, this this is my opinion. I would I would not give it a nine, but this is IGN's uh, opinion. What was the guy's name again? Give me one second, y'all. I'm trying to figure out this guy's name. Give me one second. Give me one second, y'all. Give me one second, y'all. Give me one second. Uh, Simon. Okay, Simon Cardi. I mean, he, bro, he gave it a, he gave it a nine, bro. I mean, that's that's his opinion. I can't get mad at it. It's just crazy because, like, bro, we gave like we gave this campaign a nine, but call, but bro, Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero was a seven, and you gotta remember, this was reviewed by two different people. You can't, you know, go crazy on IG. I mean, you can't. You can do whatever you want, but you can't go. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, IG, you got your stupid. Da, da, da. No, this was reviewed by two different people. Um, the guy that gave Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero a seven, bro. He, 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 bro. He gave it a seven because he got whooped for an entire day, literally, bro. He said it himself. He got whooped for 25 hours straight. That's why he gave it a seven. So, well, I'll be completely honest with you, man. Listen, it is what it is. I'm not gonna, you know, sit here and like rage or whatever. That, that's his opinion. That's in his opinion. Here's what it is, man. Comment down below, man. What is your score for Call of Duty Black Ops 6 campaign? I'm talking about the actual campaign itself. You, if you want to go and, you know, um, you know, give me your score for the multiplayer, the zombies, etc., you can. But I'm mainly focused on the, on the campaign. What's your score for the campaign? Again, mine's 7.5. Um, but if I had to give it one singular, like, number, whatever, not even point anything, If I give it a 7.5, doesn't that automatically round it up to an 8 since it's 0.5? Like, I think 5, anything above 5 rounds it automatically rounds it to a, to a 5, to an 8, right? You know, I wouldn't mind giving it an 8. I wouldn't mind giving it an 8. I, I wouldn't mind that. A 7 or an 8. I wouldn't mind. Again, comment down below. What do you guys think? Oh, bro, I almost messed up on my outro.